Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandian. This message I'm teaching was preached to the Corinthians who didn't believe in resurrection. And Paul said, I preached resurrection, you believed resurrection, and if it's not true, then your faith is in vain, my preaching is in vain, and we are of all men most miserable. But we're not most miserable. Jesus was raised from the dead. Hang on, we have even more great points in this broadcast today. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Boy, we have been exhausting this subject. And I trust you're not exhausted, but you're learning so much on the subject of resurrection. We are taking up verse by verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, an entire chapter dedicated to the subject of resurrection, not just the resurrection of the church. We're gonna talk about resurrections of all different types of people coming throughout history yet to come. And so the resurrection of Jesus has already occurred and we'll talk about our resurrection today. And so we ended in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're gonna take a look at verse 39, 40 and 41, these three verses of scripture and really lay down a foundation for the subject of resurrection and talking about the rapture of the church. It is a resurrection. We call it the rapture of the church. It's really the resurrection of the church. And in verse 39, it says this, of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, all flesh is not the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of men, another kind of flesh of beasts or animals, another of fish, and another of birds. This verse is simply saying, folks, there is no such thing as evolution. God has placed walls between the species and they don't cross those walls. Man's flesh is different than any flesh of anything else, animals, fish, or birds. And it man is the only creature that is eternal. Animals are not eternal, fish are not eternal, birds are not eternal. So yeah, but there's animals in heaven like horses and stuff. Those animals are made in heaven for heaven. They are eternal be- are beings also, but they're not human beings. So man's flesh is different than any flesh. He says in verse 40, there's also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Those are from the earth. The glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the terrestrial is another. When we look at the stars at night, man, they're all different. They all shine differently. And there's the sun and the moon, which are the brightest. And then after that, no two stars are the same. No two planets are the same. They all shine differently. So we will be in heaven. All of us will be like some like the sun and the moon. Some people compare that to Jesus himself. But man, some of us will shine brighter than others, and you might shine brighter than me or somebody else, but everybody's going to be different. No two Christians will be the same in eternity. But the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. And so he's bringing out, and we have brought out in verses before this, this is a type of the resurrection. And the resurrection, again, was of our bodies. Our bodies are seeds and the outside, and when you put a seed in the ground, the seed doesn't die, the shell of the seed dies, releasing the heart of that. And what plant comes out comes from the heart of the seed, not from the uh, body of the seed. And so I mentioned oak trees. When you plant an acorn in the ground, the shell of the acorn breaks apart. The heart of the acorn produces that almost indestructible tree. Your, your indestructible body called a resurrection body does not come from this, it comes from inside of you. It's the spirit put making flesh, but it will turn this flesh into a brand new resurrection body that cannot be destroyed. So the different types of glory this is referring to, it could be man himself. We have kings and governors, business leaders. We look around, we see all different types of people in different positions. And so man also has glory or brilliance. And this glory means that you have one that you see and they think a lot about the king because he represents great authority, then governors underneath him, then business leaders. We have school teachers and they might teach a class, but we also have the principals of the school. But we get down then into truck drivers drivers, cashiers, whatever, pretty much people that stand alone. And that's what this is saying. So we go all the way from those who who will carry much authority in heaven and much authority into eternity, but you have all the way down to those that won't. This is all brought out in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So the glory of heaven is different too. In heaven, you have the glory of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but you also have angels. The highest ranking angels are cherubs. Underneath them are seraphims. Underneath that is the rank and file angels. And verse 41 says, there is one glory or brilliance of the sun, another glory or brilliance of the moon, another glory or brilliance of the stars. And as one star differs from one another, uh, another star in glory, the natural glory, 
is as different as the sun, the moon, and the stars. All are different in brilliance. But the spiritual kingdom is also as different as the sun, the moon, and the stars. In heaven, our brilliance will be determined, and then we are given rewards for that, and no two believers will receive the same amount of rewards. And as Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, so an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. I don't want to just go to heaven. There was a woman that used to stand up in our church when we'd have a testimony time. She said, ended it every single time the same way. Pray for me. I can just make it into heaven. I don't want to just make it into heaven. I want to go in with lots of rewards. I want to come in with wagon loads of gold, silver, and precious stones, not because I tried to get it from the rewards. I did it because I love people. I love the work God gave me. I'm dedicated to it, and I plan on getting lots of rewards in heaven, not to brag on me, but to brag on God's acceptance and thankfulness for how I serve in my ministry. And so it says in that verse of scripture, again, there's different glories. In heaven, our brilliance will be determined, then we'll be rewarded for that. Every believer will be as different as the stars, one after another, some bright to dim, all the way again to the sun and the moon. Verse 42 goes on to say this, so is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown or planted in corruption. It is raised or reaped in incorruption. I said it yesterday, I'll say it again today. We do not bury Christians, we plant them. There's going to come a resurrection day and some will be in the ground for hundreds of years. Some will be in the ground for hundreds of minutes, hundreds of seconds, and they'll be resurrected into the uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll have a body just like his. So much of the Bible is understood by sowing and reaping. I'm gonna say that again, much of the Bible is understood by sowing and reaping. Mark 4, 13, Jesus said this to his disciples, do you understand this parable? And they went, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. He said, if you don't understand it, how would you understand all parables? He's simply saying this one parable, this one understanding of sowing and reaping describes so many doctrines in the word of God. Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night will never cease. One thing he mentioned that will never cease is seed time and harvest. We are always going to have seed time and harvest. When a seed is planted, it grows by degrees. So is the daily Christian life until the day of resurrection. Mark chapter four, verse 28 and 29, for the earth brings forth fruit by itself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the year. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. This is kind of like mankind today in the earth. The church itself keeps growing and growing. And you as a member of the body of Christ start out as first of all, you're planted in the new birth. If you study the word of God, the blade comes out. You continue to study the word of God, the ear comes out, then the full corn in the ear. And finally, verse 29, when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come and there's coming a harvest day for all of us. And that will be the day of the rapture of the church, the resurrection of the church. On that day, our physical body, which is the seed will be sown when we die and the resurrection body is the harvest. Our physical body is under the curse from Adam and has to return back to dust. So it is with the shell that's around the seed. And the, the natural body, which has a curse from Adam, has many dishonorable titles in the word of God. And we're gonna find them here in these verses of scripture. We're gonna find weakness and dishonor and things like that. The resurrection body has no curse and will be rid of all dishonorable things whenever we come up with Jesus. I like to think of it this way again, that if you plant a seed that has that is squash, well, what happens is the squash comes from the heart of the seed, not from the shell, but the shell has to first of all, get be gotten rid of. The shell has to first of all dissolve. Then what's in the inside comes to life when it touches the ground and the moisture around it and all the elements and all the nutrition that's in the ground and starts to produce a squash. We also are the same way. When our natural body turns back to dirt, dirt, it releases what's on the inside of us. Our spirit goes to be with the Lord, which really happens immediately. The moment we die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord that goes to heaven. But one day those elements that are here, this physical body, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, will be turned into a resurrection body and it will be given new life by the spirit on the inside of us. My natural body today has a temporary life given to it by 
Adam in this earth and his curse that's there and eventually will kill this body here if Jesus doesn't come first. But in the meantime, the body I'm gonna have one day will not be made of the dust of the ground, which carries a curse. It will come from the spirit. My human spirit will produce this body. Verse 43 says this of our physical body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It's raised in power. This natural body is dishonorable to God and will not inherit eternal life. We're still living in it. But the point of it is we learn to walk with God and learn by the power of the Holy Spirit, grow and our soul becomes renewed, our mind becomes renewed, and we learn then learn to take control over our body. Our body will never receive eternal life. It's designed to be our servant in this life. When we grow in the things of God, our body becomes the servant and carries out the will of God. We determine to do it, our natural body might resist it. It might look at all the temptations around us, but we say no, and therefore we have control over it. And this natural body will be raised from the ground in great glory, capable of rulership and fellowship with God forever and forever. So the first thing verse 43 says is our natural body is dishonor. It's dishonored by God and God even knows it. Although God has a plan for it and how we can use it, it only comes by walking in the power of the word of God and trusting the word every day. The natural body, next of all this verse of scripture, it says it's sown in weakness, it's raised in power. And so it is a weak body. The natural body is also weak in physical strength. By creation, we are made lower than angels. Angels are a superior being to us as far as, as uh, God's creation is concerned. But our resurrection body will one day be above angels and even above them in strength. We will be able to do things that they do. They can traverse the whole universe at the speed of thought, so will we. That's what a resurrection body does. But we will be above them in one area too. And that is no angel is seated at the right hand of the Father, but there is a, a resurrection body seated beside God in heaven. There is a resurrection body in heaven seated beside God and it's a resurrected human body representing the fact that God wants human beings to be associated with him in his position in heaven. No angel sits there, only one human being representing all of us and one day we will have all of us that same position in heaven. Verse 43 again says, it's sown in dishonor. Your natural body is dishonorable, but it will be raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, but it's gonna be raised in power. There is such a vast difference between your resurrection body and the body that you have now. Thanks for watching again. We're gonna to go to the break here in just a moment, but I wanna thank all those who are maybe first time watchers, first time that you're coming here. We welcome you. Welcome to our family. Welcome to this, this wonderful teaching on the word of God. I was a pastor for 33 years, so that's what keeps coming out. And a lot of ministers who are great ministers, but they have a certain subject they minister on, grace or faith or things like that. But I teach all over the word of God. And uh, I incorporate grace into it. I incorporate faith toward God. And I know you're gonna be a blessed and you're going to enjoy it. When we come back from the break, we're gonna take up from here. And if you are a brand new watcher, why don't you let us know what you think about it? I mean, give it, send us an email and tell us how much you like it or don't like it or, or things that you agree or don't agree with. We get both of them coming in. But again, we will see you right after the break and uh, you'll be blessed. When a Christian has passed away, we do not bury them. We plant them for a future harvest. One day, all Christians will put on a resurrection body. Our earthly bodies carry the image of Adam, but our resurrection bodies will carry the image of Jesus. One day, we will have bodies that will possess everlasting life. In this exciting six-part series based on 1 Corinthians 15, Pastor Bob Yandian provides a detailed study of the future resurrection of every born-again believer. Messages include a foundation doctrine. What if there is no resurrection? What is baptism for the dead? Sowing, reaping, and resurrection. Our incorruptible body and the exception generation. To order resurrection, visit our website at bobyandian.com. A new book just came in. I've been waiting on this book, Theology Simplified. This is a class I teach at Karis Bible College. And I've been waiting to put this into a book. It's eight different theological terms that sound difficult, but actually are very simple. I just simply think the Bible sometimes is filled with complicated sounding words, but you break it down, it becomes very simple. This book is called Theology Simplified. Let me tell you what all that covers. It covers predestination, it covers reconciliation and sanctification, it covers glorification, justification, 
Redemption, propitiation, and election are all covered in this book. And again, big words with simple meanings. I bring it down to you. Go to my website, bobtheandian.com. You'll find how you can have a copy for yourself. Blessings upon blessings to you. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. To further emphasize this concept of sowing and reaping, Paul mentions it all from now through these verses on what the resurrection is gonna be. He said in that verse 43 we just talked about, sown in dishonor, raised in glory, sown in weakness, raised in power. We could put it this way, planted in dishonor, but harvested in glory. It is planted in weakness, it is harvested in power because whenever, again, a Christian dies, they are planted, but there's gonna come the great harvest day of which Jesus is gonna come back and harvest us all at the same time. And that will be those who have died and gone on to be with the Lord and they're in spirit form will come back and their former bodies will receive power and be empowered and turn into a resurrection body that lasts forever. We who have this body, and if we're alive and remain at that time, this will just suddenly instantly be changed into a resurrection body and we will be the only uh, time period, the only people in time at that time that has ever been just instantly changed into a resurrection body and bypassed physical death. We are the one generation, those who believe in the rapture and will see it come to pass, will go through a time of instant transformation and we will bypass death. Let's go to verse 44. In verse 44, we continue with this concept of sowing and reaping. Verse 44, speaking of our natural body that we're living in now, which is born under a, a curse, which again is dishonorable be toward God, but uh, again, we'll, we'll have an honorable resurrection. Verse 44 says, it is sown or it is planted a natural body. It is harvested a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Our physical body here is called natural because it's made of nature. Nature is the dust of the ground. When Adam sinned, the sin that, that he committed corrupted all the dirt, all the ground. And so because the dirt was corrupted, everything coming from the dirt was corrupted. And so the natural uh, dust around us was cursed. That's why the one part of us that's made out of dirt is still under the curse because that has not been lifted off the earth. That will be lifted off the earth at the coming of Jesus Christ to rule and reign over this planet one day. That will be the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Our physical body is called natural because it's made of nature. It's made out of dust. And so that's why we're still under a curse in this natural body. But we overcome it by walking in the spirit. That's not only walking in the power of our own human spirit, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, empowering our spirit when we walk in that. But the mind has to be renewed to that because we have to make a choice to do that. And so this is where Romans chapter 12 comes in. The real growth in the Christian life comes by the renewing of the mind, learning to think like Jesus does, to lose the mind of Bob, but to gain the mind of Christ. So our physical body is called natural because it's made of nature. And it says, here again, it is sown or planted a natural body made of nature, but it will be raised or harvested a spiritual body. So this is what it's telling us. This body is made of nature, but the resurrection body will be made of spirit. And it's a small S here. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit, although he empowers it. It is our spirit man on the inside, which is eternal, also manufacturing a physical body on the outside of us, which will also be spiritual because cursed ground produces a cursed body, but redeemed spirit produces a redeemed body. So it comes, everything produces after its own kind. Our physical body is again called natural because it's made of nature and dust. Since the dust was cursed, and all that came from it is cursed. Our body is the part of us still under the curse. But the resurrection body is spirit made tangible. What do I mean by that? The spirit inside of us is not tangible. You can't feel it, shake hands with it. You can see it, but it doesn't have any, any a natural tangibility to it. But it will be made tangible one day when the resurrection body comes because like they could touch the, the uh, body of Jesus, they could touch it, they 
they can feel it. He says, put your hand into the, the nail prints in my hands and put your hand over here, your fingers into the, the wound in the side of my body. He said, a spirit does not have flesh and bone like you see me have, and Jesus does. The resurrection body will too. So the resurrection body is spirit made tangible. Our body is a seed and the spirit man on the inside is the heart of the seed. And our physical body today is made of the dust of the ground, will dissolve, but the spiritual body will come from the heart of the seed. And that way, again, we will be a complete spiritual being. Our physical body is called corruption in verse 42. It's also in verse 43 called dishonorable. It's called weakness in verse 44. It's called a natural body in verse 44. 44. But since you always reap more than what you sow, the resurrection body is basically a hundredfold return on the natural body. Our resurrection body is called incorruptible or incorruption. Our resurrection body is called glory. Our resurrection body is called power. And our resurrection body is called spiritual. In other words, it's the exact thing of sowing. It's sown corruptible, raised incorruptible. Sown in weakness, raised in power. Sown in natural body, raised in spiritual body. It's all a transformation that comes because the new body we will have comes from the new birth. The first body we have comes from the first birth. And since the first birth came from the Lord, but as well as Adam, our physical body, so our physical body will have to be changed in resurrection. The Bible tells us again, even this natural body we have cannot stand in front of God in heaven. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So verse 45 goes on to say here in 1 Corinthians 15, and so it is written, a quote from Genesis 2, 7, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul the last Adam will be made a life-giving or quickening spirit. Adam was alive, could not pass it on. Notice this, Adam was a living soul. And Jesus Christ is a quickening, life-giving spirit. Adam was alive, but he could not pass that life on. Jesus is alive and does pass that life on to us when we ask for it. That's why that we can change from Adam to the Lord Jesus Christ. If any man be in Adam, he's dead. If any man be in Christ, he's made alive. In Adam, all die but in Christ shall all be made alive. Verse 46 goes on to say, how be it? Now we pull up to a summary. What is the summary? He says, in summary, that body was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after that which is spiritual. We didn't come into this earth in a spiritual body. Even Jesus didn't. He came in a natural body without a curse. That's because it was bypassed through the virgin birth. But we come into this earth with a natural body under the curse. So we all come into this life, even Jesus, in a natural body and then eventually a spiritual body. Jesus, at the resurrection of his resurrection, received a spiritual body. At our resurrection, we will also receive a resurrection body. So you cannot have a resurrection body first. You must begin with a natural body. No one begins with a resurrection body. Even Adam and Jesus did not begin with a resurrection body, but a natural body, both of them free from the curse. We have a body which has the curse, but one day we'll have a resurrection body just like Jesus, and the usual way to a resurrection body will be to go through death. The only exception will be us, those who are alive at the rapture generation. I keep saying that, us, because I know some are going to die, but I really believe I'm living in the rapture generation. Oh, others have thought that too. Yes, they have, but you know what? I still believe it. Well, what if you die and go to heaven? Hallelujah, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, but I'll receive a resurrection body when they all receive a resurrection body. But even Paul used this term, we who are alive and remain. He included himself in that. He thought he would see the resurrection. He thought he would see the rapture. And he simply said there that he thought he would go to bed. And he says, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So verse 48 goes on to say this, as is the earthy, that's the first body we have, so are they also that are earthy. And as the heavenly, each one of them also that are heavenly also. There's a contrast between our natural body and a resurrection body. Even believers in a natural body are earthy. Why, even though we're born again, even though we follow the word of God in our spirit, we keep growing in our in a spirit man, we grow every day. The soul becomes renewed. We have the mind of Christ. But even believers in a natural body are earthy and we're pressured by the senses every day to follow the world. But like Jesus, our resurrection body will be free in heaven 
and no longer possessed with the nature of the flesh or the pressures of a natural body. The nature of the flesh is in our bodies, not in any part out. Again, I have to qualify that because when we die in this earth, all the natures and tendency of the flesh is gone. I mean, when a person dies, well, there's, even been, there's even been testimonies of people that died and came back in their body. They said, for that moment, a few moments while I was uh, no longer in this body, there was a freedom I've never felt before. But when I came back in that body, all these freedoms seem to be pressed again. Romans chapter six and verse six tells us where the flesh is located. It's in our body. That's why we call it the flesh. The flesh nature is in our body. Romans 6, six talks about the body of sin. Romans 6.12, let not sin reign in your mortal body. Romans 6.13, do not yield your members to sin. Romans 7.5, sin which works in our members. Romans 7.23, the law of sin which is in our members. Colossians 3.5 says, mortify your members. Fornication, uncleanness, and goes down the list of other sins that are there. And James chapter four and verse one talks about lusts which war in your members. So this is where the nature of the flesh is. The temptation for sin comes from your flesh. Your spirit's been redeemed. Your soul is being redeemed day by day, growing the things of God. But there is no great future for this earthly body. It gets older, it starts to fall apart, and one day we'll totally die, go into this earth. And so God, to have us remain with him in heaven or be with us on earth has to put us in a body that's just like our inward man. And that's gonna happen at the resurrection of the church, the rapture of the church. And when that happens, again, we will have a body that's made out of our spirit on the inside, which is born again. Our spirit's brand new, so our body will be brand new because that, that body that we'll have on that day comes from the heart of the seed. So this is what we have. So the resurrection body, again, will be just as righteous as our inward man. Verse 49, we'll end on this verse of scripture, says this, and as we have born or carried through life, the image of the earthy that's in our physical body, we will also bear the image of the heavenly in our resurrection body. The image of the earthy, earthy bodies is all that is contained in the fall of Adam. Aging, failing strength, wrinkles, prone to sickness, temptations. We have to use our faith against all these things. When we're tempted, what? We have to say no to them. The image of the heavenly excludes totally the nature of the flesh and the curse of Adam. It's, we have, we'll be back to a perfect age. Some people think around 33 and that will be permanent just as Jesus was 33. Maximum strength, perfect strength, perfect skin, no more sickness, no more temptations. All this will be part of a resurrection body. Everything that we try to get out of a jar today or by shots or something else will come by the coming of the resurrection body. And that's how we will stay forever and forever. You say, oh, that sounds like heaven. <laughs> it is heaven. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us today. Trust you've been blessed. There is a, uh, again, we're offering a series on resurrection that's gonna go into great detail and even things I didn't get into will be on there and we will see you tomorrow and we will take up where we left off today. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.